The last but definitely not the least best practice that you need to use with uh, Apex Trigger is handling recursion in triggers. Before going on with this best practice, let me first recall you the two best practices that we discussed earlier. Number one was bulkifying the trigger. Number two was uh, using the trigger helper class design pattern. All of this is a best practice and uh, this is the third best practice that we are going to be discussing, which is basically handling the recursion in triggers. Uh, so let me first tell you what exactly recursion means. Recursion is uh, something like this. So there's a trigger on object A, let's say. And on object B, we've got another trigger. So this trigger initiates the call of this trigger. And this trigger again initiates the call of this trigger. So this is something which we call as a recursion. Recursion is nothing but calling of the same. Uh, so when it comes to methods, uh, when you call the same method inside a method, this is basically what is called as recursion. It can be uh, direct and it can be indirect. But in case of uh, triggers, it's it cannot be direct, uh, but it can be indirect. So when you are updating, let's say, a contact and that initiates a trigger on account and that initiation of the uh, like trigger on account initiates the execution of the contact trigger again. So this becomes a loop and typically a never ending loop, which is exactly what we call as a recursion. So in order to stop that, all what you need to take care of is, uh, all what you need to do is you just need to have a variable to, uh, to store the information whether this trigger has been executed already in this pass or not. That's all what you need to do. So how can you do that? So over here, I've created a trigger, Apex Trigger 12 on the case object, and it gets executed on before update and after insert, both of them. And uh, in this, all what we're doing is we are using a Boolean value, which is declared as public static, uh, is first run update and is first run insert. So we've got two values uh, for now. So first of all, let's understand is first run insert only. So if let's say uh, this trigger is getting executed for the first time, so the by default value of this is true. And if the value is true, then in, uh, then in this if condition, it will go as true and it will enter this particular block in which the code is written, which we actually need to execute onto this particular trigger. And as soon as it goes inside this particular trigger, we change the value of is first run insert to false. Earlier it was true and now it has become false. And now it is executing the case trigger helper my method too. So we have created a method as well inside uh, this case trigger, which, uh, which looks like this. Uh, over here, what we are doing is we are just uh, getting all of the cases and we are updating the case list. That's all what we are doing. We're just calling another method from here. But if the, the execution of this, uh, like this update initiates the execution of another trigger, which again initiates the execution of Apex trigger 12, then in that case, it will go on to if case trigger helper dot is run, first run insert. And now the value of this particular value is false. So it will not enter over here and it will not call this method again. And hence it will break the cycle and if it will break the cycle, the recursion will not happen. So all what you need to do in order to stop recursion in triggers is you need to create a static Boolean value into the helper class. And uh, that is something that you need to update as soon as the code gets executed for first time. And once it comes back, uh, like while having recursion, uh, the, it should not allow the same code to be executed once again so that it can become a recursion. So we need to avoid recursion at any cost and this is how you can avoid it. And over here we've got before update and after insert. So for both of them, I have already created uh, two uh, Boolean values, uh, one for first run insert and one for first run update. So let's say like we have first inserted a record, uh, it initiated another trigger and uh, again, like the update of the, or not the another trigger, but let's say the, uh, I mean, yeah, okay. So in this trigger, we've got before update. In this trigger, we've got after insert. Uh, if the like execution is happening because, because of the insert, we are updating the case records. And because of updating the case records, this trigger will get executed once again. 
and if this trigger will get executed once again, it will go into the update trigger and it will check whether it has updated already or not. And if, it, if, if, if it, like the by default value is true over here for its first run update and if, uh, if this is the first time when we are executing this particular code, this will uh, let the code go in or let the execution, uh, let the, yeah, let the execution of the code written inside it uh, happen and as soon as it goes inside the yeah i mean the boolean value will get updated to uh, false from true and it will execute uh, my method one which is like this and it will insert new case list so what this my method one is doing is it's inserting new cases and my method two is updating uh, updating the cases right the case records so in both the situation recursion can happen so to avoid both of these situations what we need to do is we need to have this boolean value inside the helper class which will define whether this code has been so like after updating the records it will insert new case uh, case records and uh, like as soon as it will uh, insert new case records it will go over here and it will check whether the insert operation uh, happened earlier or not and if it, if it had happened earlier then the value must have been false already so it will no, not go inside and will not execute the code back again and if it, it will not go uh, inside the code and will not execute the code back again then uh, we can avoid the recursion and that's all what it is.